Hello everybody, this is Master DK, and welcome to Tubi Terror. This is going to be a uh, little uh, movie review series that I'm going to be trying out. You're probably wondering why it's so dark in here, why my eyes are so red, and why my skin is so gray. Well, uh, first of all, you're all a bunch of racists. Second of all, I just thought, you know, it would be unique. You know, try, try a little something new, you know? Plus, I kind of have this demon angel avatar that I never really put to use on this channel before. I figured better late than never, you know, incorporating <laughs> that into my uh, videos. And uh, why is it so dark in here? It's because I'm watching a horror movie. I'm not going to watch it with a bunch of lights on. You expect me to flash a big old light in my face while I'm reviewing these movies? No. No, not a chance. Pretty much I started this series to have fun. Uh, pretty much I'm going to be taking a look at a bunch of uh, horror movies on uh, Tubi and uh, exploring their very... Um, bizarre contents and just get my thoughts you're probably wondering dk so many people are already doing this why you i i've kind of wanted to do this for a long time now i've tried other formats in the past for this and they did not work out in the way i wanted them to so this is a fresh start i'm going to put actual effort into making these types of videos and i'm going to try and stay to an algorithm i'm going to keep this series going and uh yeah, we're just going to see where it goes from here. So in this series, I'm going to be not only looking at a bunch of dumb horror movies, but I'm going to be looking at horror movies you'd swear were supposed to be dumb. That's stupid. Shut up. My therapist said I don't have to talk to you anymore. Look, I'm trying, okay? I, I even wrote a theme song for this series. Have a listen. To be terror. There's a bunch of movies that are free and nobody's heard of them, so I figured why not? To be terror, there's a bunch of movies that should be criticized seriously, but I'm not going to because it's more fun. To be terror, is this an excuse to troll my audience? Yes, it is. It's a work in progress. Anyways, I plan on starting with the best of the best on this streaming service. Probably not, because there's probably many I'm overlooking. But how about we start with the diamond mine known as Killer Sofa. I just love the front cover for more ways than one. First of all, it looks like a Goosebumps novel. Hell, I've seen one exactly like it. And two, for a reason I shall address later. That's my way of keeping you in suspense. Which is more than what I could say about this movie. So sit tight. You're in for a show. We open in one of the most predictable ways a killer sofa movie could open with. Human Centipede! Yeah! Where we basically see a guy about to chop up another guy. Right now, since we were never introduced to them, they're just guy one and guy two. And we get a good glimpse at the horror-filled face of our movie. <laughs> and we get a good glimpse at the horror-filled face of our movie. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't say that with a straight face. We then cut to present day where a guy named Arthur and two other girls are looking to deliver the killer sofa. Ahem, <clears throat> sorry, I, uh, recliner. <laughs> Silly me, I thought that seeing sofa on the cover meant there was going to be a sofa in it. They see the supposedly non-sentient piece of furniture chained up to a wall in a red glowing room with ritualistic items surrounding it and a little piece of paper saying, Deliver to Francesca. They will of course deliver it to Francesca because we're only two minutes into the movie and we're willing to sacrifice Brain to make this a full-length film. Oh no, they're in the House of Wax! That's even worse! Paris Hilton is about a hundred times scarier than whatever you come across in there! I sure can't wait to see where this scene goes. Dancing! Oh! This is Francesca. Francesca is the main focus of this film, and she and her friend Maxie are approached by a couple of detectives named Gravy and Grape. What? I'm not kidding. They're here to tell Francesca that a deranged stalker of hers, Frederico, has been chopped to bits. And we find out something very important about Francesca. She attracts weird men. Welcome to womanhood? So a dangerous killer who killed someone obsessed with Francesca is on the loose, but clearly there's more important things for her to worry about. Like furniture! Time to get her a killer sofa. I, I mean, awesome recliner! Too bad it doesn't want to leave the red room, though, despite wanting to be delivered to Francesca, but whatever. Okay, you two, go take care of that. Get that gross shit out of my face. We got a Satanist recliner to move. We then get introduced to Maxie's grandfather, who gets the chair delivered to him. 
Apparently, Frederica has no idea where Francesca lives, yet has stalked her constantly. Oh, I'm sorry, did I spoil the big twist of this movie? Yes, Frederico is in the recliner. They expect you to spend the entirety of the movie's runtime wondering what the twist could possibly be. When it's so painfully obvious, they're trying to be another child's play. Ginger Dead Man tried it, Jack Frost tried it. So many movies have tried to be the next child's play. They all failed. Now, let's continue this movie as they expect you to be too dumb to figure this out. The grandfather confronts the recliner and is instantly afraid of it. I mean, hey, I would be too. Chairs are worse than the devil. That's why I only have beanbags in my house. Then he touches it and... I can't. He instantly has a fucking seizure and starts having vision flashes of this woman. When Arthur asks him what is wrong, he says it's the heat. It must have been the heat. Yeah, because the heat makes you do this. <laughs> Francesca arrives home to her roommate TJ. What do we know about this character? He's a gay guy who Francesca wants to get with. Says so much about him. Francesca sits right on the recliner, and this is too easy to make a joke about, so I'll refrain. This, however... <laughs> That looks like the face of a recliner that wants to lean forward for once. We cut back to the grandfather who ponders about the chair and why it gave him visions. And through some educational and convenient reading, he discovers it could be a debuck, which is what I would name this Muppet too. Then we cut back to a <sighs> shower scene. Can a horror movie get past its runtime once without the chick of the movie showering? Is that a part of a collective contract? So, we have our demonic entity, we have met our jump scare quota of about 100, and we have one of our female leads showering naked. I'd say we are ready for a fantastic horror film. How is a female showering scary? Why, it makes your body shiver, of course. Mm. Pretty sure you mean a different type. Oh, tomatoes, tomatoes, you leave the thinking to me. And then, ah, we're an American Horror Story! Oh no, it's just Maxie who thought it would be a fantastic idea to scare her in the shower. Best friend or psycho friend? You pick. After Maxie leaves later that night, Francesca gets nice and comfy on to Buck. And... Watching, but it's not for me. Turns out it was just a dream. Heh, I've had weirder. We then see the grandfather experiencing some complications as he watches a video talking about what a debuck is. And I don't know who this guy is, but he looks like a typical horror YouTuber, and after seeing him just chew this scene like gum, I would subscribe to him immediately. As you know, the debuck is a powerful spirit that feeds on the living. First thing to remember is never touch it. Open the door to allow the beast to enter your body and your mind. He's saying the most basic shit I've ever heard, but I love how he says it. Not gonna lie, he's kind of my favorite character, and he's barely in this. You may soon experience strange health problems, such as hives, coughing up blood, head to toe welts, loss of balance, severely untrimmed toenails. Anyways, Francesca wakes up that morning to find that Debuck, the magical living chair, has decided to make her breakfast. Aww. But of course, Francesca thinks that TJ did it, and also thinks she's the one that pleased her the other night, and he understands a woman's needs. You say to a gay guy, kind of a bitch move there. <laughs> And then, and then TJ eats the cookies. This is the guy you want to be with, huh? Uh, at least he's not a crazy stalker. You'll just be with anybody now, huh? Later on, our favorite food detectives bring Francesca back for questioning. And Maxie too, for some reason. And they want more info on her connection to Frederico. They ask her if any of her boyfriends ever displayed violence, and she said there's been BDSM before, and Gravy puts out a little PSA for the audience. Jessica, violence is never okay. Prude. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Oh god, I really don't want this amateur cooking show to go on any longer. Debuck, can you help me out? Whew, thank you. Francesca and Gravy Boat managed to make it to the apartment in time to save TJ and the apartment from burning down. And of course, the first suspicious thing Gravy notices is the recliner. As if he saw what the viewer did. <laughs> Meanwhile, the grandfather is calling... his father? Damn, what health plan is he on? He tells his father he founded a book, and the father, being a little prick, goes off on a rant about how he is unable to perform what needs to be done, and he doesn't deserve to be a rabbi, blah 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 blah. Next! So TJ is now bedridden and needs crutches for transportation. He's unable to get more water for his pills. By the way, those should be useless now, but whatever. So that means he's gotta fight the pain and get up. <laughs> That is the perfect trailer shot, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> I don't see how the scene could get any better than this. <laughs> yep, springy arms. I don't think there's any more I can say about that. Springy arms. But yeah, that fucker dead. Next, we cut back to the awesome horror YouTuber dude again. Oh, you bet your ass, I'm listening intently to this. It must feed on the souls of its victims to get stronger. Those who have come across it to book feed it. Speak of a lingering putrid smell of burnt flesh in the air. Also, TJ seems to be having a case of the Ghostbusters cross streams. Yeah, that's a thing. Showing that DeBuck is getting stronger by sucking out his soul. I can think of a few movie companies who can do the same thing. Wonder what Grandpa Not a Rabbi is up to. What do you see? <laughs> it's like he realized he peed himself. So he has another vision telling us what well, we already fucking knew! And also that the woman he kept seeing poisoned someone and took her own life. After that... Good God. That might be the scariest part of the whole movie. What the fuck? Tomorrow morning we'll call every delivery company in the city if we have to. Whoever has that recliner is in great danger. Someone was paid to write that on a script. Props. We then see that Francesca is having a nightmare. About what? No idea. She just turned around really fast and then woke up. And her panties were on the floor. Again, I've had weirder. So now we get to see her investigate her place for real. And also this. <laughs> ah, you have ghosts! Oh wait, it's just the chair. False alarm. She calls up her friend Maxie to come help her, with a chair! And she doesn't do the thing any normal friend would do and actually gets up to head over there. Anyone else find the glistening eyes cute? No? No one at all? You're scared? Alright. So Francesca wants to leave and stay at Maxie's pad. I mean, place. Oh, come on, the joke was right there. Nah, sadly there's more. The next morning, the cleaning lady finds an eyeball in her vacuum. Oh, th that's not going anywhere? Okie doke. Now enter Ralph. Yeah, we're almost to the end of this movie, let's waste time with another character. This Bill Hader looking douche bro is basically just here to be a creep. And get killed. That's about it. You don't need to play any clips with him, please God! So it looks like Francesca is safe and sound in Maxie's abode. But then she asks Maxie to go check on the recliner because she's such a good friend. It's my sister's birthday. I should give her a call. Also, I guess we could squeeze some time in to worry about Gravy Train's divorce problems. But once that shit's over with, they see that in the background of one of Frederico's videos, there before their very eyes is DeBuck the Living Recliner! Finally! What the hell took you so long? Meanwhile, Gramps is telling Maxie about the recliner, and giving us the most convincing bout of pain ever given on film. There's no time to lose. We've got to go get, get, get it. Oh, oh. Stay with him, Ashanti. I'll go. Oh. No, no, no. It's too dangerous. Maxie. Maxie, oh. Maxie, oh. Maxie, oh. Maxie. Maxie. Maxie, oh. Maxie arrives at Francesca's place and sees a dead Ralph and DeBuck trying to dispose of the body. Now, with respect to the movie itself, I will play the appropriate music that fits perfectly into this scene. <laughs> 
So Maxie goes to hide in the bathroom, ensuring she gets trapped in the apartment, and then she jumps out the window into a trash can, ensuring serious injury. I am ruling her COD as incompetence. Francesca arrives soon after, and we see DeBuck is whispering the name Valerie through the sink. I am not even going to waste an it joke. Not here. Not now. She is startled by the sudden appearance of gravy ladle and grape juice, and she tries to explain the situation in a panicky manner while holding a bottle of pills. Gee, I wonder what's gonna happen. Francesca tries calling Maxie again and find out the call was coming from outside the trash can. Ooh. Grapefruit and gravy biscuits go down to investigate and uncover the body of Ralph. Then they uncover the body of Max. Okay. Also, more to Buck whispering ASMR. We then interrupt this program to bring you the Half-Blood Prince. Or wait, no, it looks like Francesca is gonna jump to her death! Or wait, no, she's gonna visit her friend's grandfather. Right? Yep, okay. It's here that we learn a bunch of valuable information. Valerie and Gerard performed witchcraft, they poisoned people, Valerie killed herself in front of Francesca's great-grandmother, her great-grandmother got possessed by Valerie, men were drawn to her in the same way men like Frederico were drawn to Francesca. This movie is called Killer Sofa! Hell, Francesca seems just as interested as I am. That's exactly what happens to me. <laughs> so they get the idea to create a couple of debug boxes, to trap both the spirits of Gerard in the recliner, and Valerie in the... Francesca. But let's take a break and watch Turkey Gravy's workout routine. Riveting. Alright, now it's time to face the killer furniture. Facing him takes a toll on Grandpa here, and he asks Francesca for his bottle, clearly. But she instead takes the box and leaves because she's dumber than a goldfish. It's actually something straight out of an SNL special, watching this dude constantly reaching for his pills, even while help is being called. We then meet up with the guy who supposedly killed Frederico, cause I guess it was essential to have him back, and he's being interrogated by Red Eye Gravy about what happened. And as it turns out, he actually didn't kill Frederico. Just chopped off his legs. I'm sure the police will forgive you. Also, gee, I wonder where Frederico really is. I have a wild guess, but I won't do spoilers for you fine people. Francesca makes it back to her apartment for her ultimate face-off with DeBuck the Living Recliner! Then she does what she probably should have done already and plans to light DeBuck on fire. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the best scene in the whole movie! <laughs> this is meme worthy how could something so iconic go unchecked maybe if it wasn't under the name killer sofa this might actually achieve internet fame anyways after that debuck goes into his ultimate form oh look and frederico is in the chair did you not know that did you not know frederico is in the chair D do you need help? I can get you help. And just like Chuck, I mean inspiration, a few gunshots is all it takes to take down the mighty Frederico. But oh no, they didn't stop the spirit of Valerie. And she fully possesses Francesca, causing her to become a psychotic killer. This movie is called Killer Sofa. That's better. So yeah, this movie has some fun scenes in it, and for what it is, it's pretty okay. It does deliver what it promises. What am I saying? It didn't deliver what the movie promised at all. I wanted a killer sofa and you gave me a chair. I demand that the living demonic furniture in my horror movies are authentic to the title. Despite it being obvious clickbait, we do get some hilarity from the living recliner in action. Was it supposed to make us laugh? No. But I mean, come on. Do any of these movies intend to actually scare you? Do they really? 
The grandpa was pretty entertaining to watch, and again, a horror YouTuber man was an absolute joy. Please tell me he's in other horror movies like this. Well, not exactly, but he does have other work in other obscure titles. Hey, I don't care what he's in. Have him come to YouTube with his persona and I'm happy. But I think the main problem I had with this movie is... Yeah, it kinda did take itself too seriously at times. Instead of trying to have fun with this hilarious premise. I mean, when you pitch the idea of demonic living room seating, you gotta really make it entertaining. Don't go for the horror, don't go for the impact. Go for a good time. Other movies like Killer Clowns from Outer Space understood this a lot better. And if they're gonna sit around, get drunk or high, and watch a movie about a killer sofa, give them what they're expecting. But again, I enjoyed parts of it just fine. And keep in mind their budget was 1 million, so of course you get what you get. I couldn't find a lot of info about how much money this movie made, but for all we know, they could have made enough for a sequel. And this movie only came out a couple years ago, so only time will tell if Killer Sofa 2 comes around. Let's hope that if they do, they go even more nuts than before. There we go, that's my first To Be Terror video. Man, can't wait to get this puppy- Did you hear that? It came from my living room. Better go check it out. Oh.